If you try to control the variety of situations that may pop up in your face tomorrow morning, all that will happen is you will become a very limited life. You would step out into the world and do whatever that needs to be done, only if you have an assurance, no matter what you walk into, you will not lose yourself. You will walk full stride, otherwise you'll only be a half a step. Most human beings are half steps because the fear of suffering. If this happens, what will happen to me? If that happens, what will happen to me? If you're well managed within yourself, you know how to manage your thought, you know how to manage your emotion, you know how to manage your body, your chemistry, your energy. If you know how to manage all this, what does it matter if you walk into hell, I'm asking? If you are well managed, if you are a heaven within you, what does it matter where you go? Hell also will be an interesting place to go. But if you are ill managed, then you want to be in a nice place all the time. You will not step out into anything. I'm not saying this is wrong, this is against nature because in nature every life is aspiring to be as much as it can be, isn't it? Every life is naturally aspiring, this is not a philosophy, this is not an ideology that you must do this or that. It is natural and intrinsic for every life that it will do as much as it can. From an earthworm, from a worm to an insect to a bird, to an animal, to a tree, every one of them are trying to be full-fledged life. If you go against this, simply because of the fear of suffering, then all possibilities of exploring the nature of being human, the tremendous immensity of being human is just lost upon humanity. Today, you will see this everywhere when people say, I am only human, they are talking about the limitations of being human. They are not talking about the possibilities of being human, isn't it? When… if we are the most intelligent species on the planet, if we are the most capable species on the planet, should we be talking about our possibilities or should we be talking about our limitations? Whenever anybody writes or says, oh, we are human, they are always referring to their limitations, never to the possibilities of being human. This is because the… the most fundamental things have not been taught in our education systems, how to handle your thought and your emotion. Your psychological drama has gone out of control. <laughs> it's a badly directed drama, believe me. If it was a well-directed drama, you would take it to the conclusion that you want, isn't it? Because it's a badly directed drama, just about anybody can take charge of it. Who is the director of your psychological drama? Just about anybody, isn't it? Anybody can make it into a tragedy. <laughs> the reason why people have not even learned to manage their thought and emotion, by the time you're ten, you should have learnt it. At sixty, people still don't know how to manage their thought and emotion. They're standing up like ghosts in their life. They don't need anybody's help. They can go on endlessly creating suffering for themselves. Now, suppose you did not know how… you have normal hands and you do not know how to use it. What would you call yourself? No, you… you tell yourself, don't tell me, it's okay. Whatever you think, if you have a normal process of mental faculty and you do not know how to use it, it means the same thing, yes or no? Does it mean the same thing or no? You don't have a normal hand, then you can't use it, that's different. We will look at you compassionately. But you have a normal hand and you don't know how to use it. Whatever word you use to call yourself, don't tell me. But the same thing goes if you don't know how to use your thought and emotion towards your well-being, isn't it? Because ill-managed, because the fundamentals of life are not grasped, what is the nature of my existence? If you don't know this, how do you manage it? Only if you grasp the nature of something, then you learn to manage it, isn't it? You don't even see what it is, how to manage it? There is no way to manage it. So the first and foremost thing, that's why, is called realization. You must understand this. In this country, in this culture, we never refer to any kind of 
spiritual realization as an attainment. We only said it is a realization. Realization means you simply saw what is already there. You did not invent anything. You did not climb the top of a mountain. You are beginning to see everything just the way it is. But that has become such a rarity <laughs> that it is being hugely valued. Someone was asking me three days ago, I was in Kerala, Sadhguru, you seem to know everything. I said, see, there is only one thing I know. I know this one thing from its origin to its ultimate. I said, I know only one thing and what are you clapping your hands for? I know only this one thing. But because the nature of human experience is such, you know everything only through this one, isn't it? Dear Seekers, in the journey towards Self-Realization, we encounter many fears, the most pervasive of which is the fear of suffering. But have you ever pondered what lies beyond this fear? What transformation awaits when we embrace suffering as a part of our spiritual evolution? Why do we fear suffering? Is it because we are so deeply attached to our comfort zones that the mere thought of discomfort disturbs our inner peace? Or is it because we are conditioned to view suffering as a negative, rather than a catalyst for growth? And most importantly, how can we transcend this fear to realize our true selves? Self-realization is not just a concept, it's an experimental journey that often involves traversing through the layers of fear, especially the fear of suffering. To understand this, let's consider a simple example from everyday life. Imagine a caterpillar cocooned in its silken shell. The process of breaking free is a form of suffering for the caterpillar, yet this very struggle is what leads to its transformation into a beautiful butterfly. Similarly, our fears and sufferings can be the cocoon that we need to break free from to realize our true potential. In this context, fear of suffering can be viewed as a protective mechanism, shielding us from perceived harm. However, it is essential to discern when this protection becomes a prison, limiting our growth and evolution. By understanding that suffering is transient and a means to an end, we can begin to approach it with acceptance rather than resistance. The key to transcending the fear of suffering lies in mindfulness and awareness. When we become acutely aware of our fears and their roots, we gain the power to address them. Mindfulness practices such as meditation can be incredibly helpful in this regard. They allow us to observe our thoughts and emotions without judgment, helping us to understand the impermanence of our fears and sufferings. In embracing our fears, including the fear of suffering, we open ourselves to a world of possibilities. This acceptance does not mean we seek out suffering, but rather, we do not let the fear of it control our lives. Through this acceptance, we become more resilient, compassionate, and understanding, bringing us closer to our true selves, our self-realized state. Dear Seekers, it is through the acknowledgement and acceptance of our fears, including the fear of suffering, that we embark on the true path of self-realization. This journey is not devoid of challenges, but it is these very challenges that make the journey worthwhile. Let us remember that just like the caterpillar, our struggles and fears are the precursors to our transformation and evolution. Dear Seekers, let's delve deeper into the transformative power of suffering and its role in the journey of self-realization. Have you ever contemplated the purpose of suffering in our lives? Why is it that the most profound lessons are often learned in the hardest times? This is because suffering, in its essence, is a great teacher. It strips away the superficial layers of our being, exposing the core of our existence. 
In this rawness, we discover truths about ourselves that were previously hidden beneath the surface of everyday comfort. Consider the example of a seed. For it to transform into a sapling, it must first endure the pressure and darkness of the soil. Only by pushing through these barriers does it reach the light and blossom. Similarly, our struggles and suffering are the soil and pressure that force us to break through our limitations, propelling us towards growth and enlightenment. This process of growth through suffering can be observed in various aspects of life. Take, for instance, the discipline of physical exercise. The muscle pain and fatigue experienced during a workout are not just signs of exertion, but are also indicators of the body's strengthening process. In the realm of emotions and spirituality, the principle remains the same. Emotional pain and suffering challenge our inner strength, resilience, and understanding, leading to a deeper sense of empathy and connection with the self and the world around us. It is essential, however, to differentiate between needless suffering and transformative suffering. Not all suffering leads to growth. Sometimes, suffering is a result of our resistance to change or our refusal to let go of harmful patterns. In such cases, it becomes imperative to introspect and identify the root cause of this suffering. Is it stemming from attachment, fear, or ego? Recognizing these underlying factors can help in transforming destructive suffering into constructive suffering, the kind that leads to self-realization. In embracing suffering as a part of our spiritual journey, we must also cultivate compassion, both for ourselves and for others. Compassion softens the harsh edges of suffering and imbues it with a sense of purpose. When we approach our own suffering with compassion, we are more likely to emerge from it with wisdom and grace. Similarly, when we extend compassion towards others in their suffering, we contribute to a more empathetic and understanding world. Dear Seekers, always remember that the path to self-realization is not linear or devoid of challenges. It is a path marked by twists and turns, highs and lows, joy and suffering. Each step, each stumble, is a lesson in its own right, guiding us closer to our true essence. Let us embrace this journey with openness and courage, for it is through embracing every aspect of our experience, including suffering, that we evolve into our highest selves. Remember, the caterpillar endures the darkness of the cocoon to become a butterfly. In the same way, our struggles and fears are the very things that can lead us to our metamorphosis and ultimate self-realization.